Hi guys, Ernie here and welcome to the workshop and to the second part of my time trial preparation series. So in the first edition, I've shown you how I, uh, how and why I've changed my one by mechanical drive train uh, to ETAP. And this change has worked uh, very well. I, th I wasn't actually expecting it, but it made the riding much more comfortable and enjoyable and also the whole bike uh, a bit more usable all around and yeah because of the baseball shifting a bit better uh, in the technical stuff so that's the first change or first major change that I've done uh, now though a lot of people have been asking about the wheels so wheels are very important when time traveling of course not as important as your frame and your position uh, and your fit and yeah, these all three are, are kind of connected to each other. But the wheels are very, very different and many people look at the wheels as a serious upgrade. So if you watch my channel and follow my stuff, then you know that I've tried a whole lot of wheel sets, including some pretty bizarre ones like the two spokes, which I really liked. Uh, but for this event, uh, for the nationals, I want uh, not just a super fast setup, but since again as with the shifting modification, I don't know what the course is going to be like So something that's usable all around and still very very fast, but also needs to be light and stable in the wind uh, so Yeah, the MV 7.8s are tested uh, as the fastest spoked wheel and according to many sources in bikes where you have narrow fork blades, a spoked wheel is also going to be faster uh, than uh, than tri-spoke or two-spoke or five-spoke, whatever, uh, because you have you know the less of an effect of the huge blade just suddenly passing through an empty space between the forks. But that's a complicated detail. I don't exactly know how that works. Well, I know that the 7.8 front is light. It's super fast and it's extremely stable in the wind. So that's my candidate. I'm not going to change that. With the rear though, uh, the choice pretty much is going to be a disc uh, to have a good pairing. And I've also owned a couple of discs before. So I've had back when uh, I built my first time trial bike, an old Zip 900 tubular. That was a light, narrow disc. Uh, then I had a Dash Super Light 800 gram uh, tubular disc. Then I had a Zip Super 9. I had the Head Jet Black. And those are all great wheels. But uh, now uh, two more options have emerged basically uh, this year on the market. So I wanted to do something about that. And of course. Uh, all of my wheels basically are MD now and I wanted to keep uh, that the same way because I really like MV wheels and many people have actually asked if I'm getting the MV disc but the answer will, was always no and that's uh, for the reason that I found an even better option and partly also because I was a bit underwhelmed from MV's offering in this sense uh, so, yeah, this uh, is my wheel choice in the front and in the rear. My disc has finally arrived, and as I said in the comments previously, it's the Roval 321. Uh, now, why have I chosen this? Well, I have some uh, wind tunnel data from it, and it's uh, in terms of aero drag, it's on par with the top offerings from Zip, Head, etc. So all, all the major players, it's faster at some your angles, on par on others. So air performance is there. But as I said, it also needs to be versatile. And by that, I mean a low weight. And the thing is, the MV disc weighs 1250 grams, which to be honest, it's quite porky because even the Zip Super 9, which admittedly isn't tubeless ready, but 
uh, still is, is a very wide disc, very modern design uh, and it's, it's lighter than that so yeah that's where the MV disappointed me a little bit now checking the roll again this disc is actually the lightest uh, disc on the market right now and some people might oppose of course there is the lightweight Autobahn and some other I, there's a brand beginning with C I don't Kotick I think or something like that well those really don't count to me and the reason for that is uh, in 2018 uh, tubular only discs 21 mil wide they just don't count in 2018 you need a disc that's super wide and tubeless ready and this is just that uh, 1000 gram exactly I've just measured it with the valve in tubeless valve in and you don't even need tape for this because well it's a disc it's it's a, a solid inner rim surface so you don't need tubeless tape uh, so it's an extremely extremely light setup and the only thing lighter basically is the Dash sorry the Dash Gretchen 25 mm uh, tubeless version but that's not made anymore and probably isn't a zero because it's just a standard flat disc uh, the clever thing about uh, this one is the shape and actually when in the bike frame I think it's, it might perform even better than the competitors because uh, the data I have is just wheel only so as you can see it's very bulbous on the non-drive side super wide basically as wide as a typical frame allows and then on the other hand on the other side you have this pocket uh, for the drivetrain for the derailleur it should accept the oversized pull level system it's pretty it's a pretty large cutout but then it bulges out again on the outer perimeter the finish is extremely similar to what I've had on dash disc and it uses the same type of materials it's 10k carbon very expensive very hard to work with that explains the price but it also uses a couple of different clever things for example uh, when a tire is not installed the wheel actually isn't dished properly uh, and it relies on the tension of the tire's bead to bring it to flex it up basically to be perfectly centered and this is, is another measure to save weight because you don't need an extra bracing to keep it uh, from flexing underneath the tire, this way it's just engineered in so the tire brings it up to spec which is extremely clever I think uh, there were a couple of press releases and information about this wheel uh, on the internet before the release or after, just after but some of them just weren't true so I read on bike radar that this disc uses a, a foam core which is just not true uh, if you look at this huge cutout, I'll bring a light to show you. All right, this is just a little bit too more in, too intense, but anyway, in, on the inside you can see spread toe fabric. Okay, so my phone battery has just died when filming, so while it was charging, I set up uh, the tire and a bike. Uh, and I was just talking about the construction of the disc itself inside you can see spread toe uh, carbon fiber which is used also on the pro Techstream discs super expensive stuff and it's also used on the MV disc uh, so pretty much uh, the choice of material for high-end uh, disc monocoques and you can see actually this wheel is just too pretty substantial plates of carbon fiber joined together at the hub and at the brake track so no foam core here so that's one information that was false another false imp information that the articles gave was that uh, the valve hole cover will be a hard plastic piece that snaps in 
that's not true unfortunately although I like the idea a lot but uh, the this comes with regular stickers uh, no big deal but still the hard reusable snap-on cover would have been nice then we have some Swiss top black brake pads that come with it and also uh, skewer titanium Roval skewer although I don't think I'm going to use this one a nicely padded roval wheel bag and also the valve I think it's proprietary to the disc because if you look at it uh, it's actually hard to see from this angle I can't really show you any better yeah so it has this uh, sleeve which you tighten the knot against and that holds the valve securely but it comes pre-installed uh, you just need to tighten it put the tire on put some sealant on and you're good to go inflation was a bit tricky because even though the cutout is very large very uh, deep there's actually not much space in this uh, opposite direction so it's quite hard to fit my silica pump head on it and I couldn't inflate the tire with just the pump I had to use the compressor so I attached the Hero V2 locking chuck and the compressor on it and uh, that's how I got the tire on but it seated pretty nicely no leaks or anything and it's quite flush this is a 25 mil course speed it's pretty much the fastest tire out there and yeah, it comes up uh, I think a tiny bit wider than uh, than the rim itself at the brake track but then it widens out so I think aerodynamically it shouldn't be an issue because they say it was designed for 26 mil tires so uh, yeah this is pretty much in that ballpark and the internal width of the rim is also quite generous at 90 mil so pretty much uh, the widest uh, in a diameter it also fills the wheel cut out uh, quite nicely and if you look at it from the side that bulge almost touches uh, this little uh, sensor cover on the track so I hope that it won't drop. It's a feature I don't really like on track frames. We have this dual trap sensor mount. That's pretty useless. No one's using regular sensors now anyway. So I don't know why uh, do they still make that. Actually bike itself, I think because of the lighter tire and the lack of rim tape is probably lighter than with the MV a 718 rear because last time I weighed it it was 9.4 kilos now it's or sorry 8.4 now it's 8.32 so a bit lighter if I put of course a course of speed on the front as well and remove the bottle cage and stuff I can get to a pretty competitive weight so that's what, that was my goal to have a time trial bike that's super fast super aero but not heavy so I don't get penalized in the climbs and have this kind of equipment it weighs pretty much the same as a mid-range uh, aero road bike so I'm really happy with that of course uh, we'll need to go to the wind tunnel to actually see how fast it is and how it performs but I hope uh, it's going to be right up there with the best setups so I have a good chance at the time shell title okay so this is pretty much what I can tell you right now about the Roval 321 tubeless disc uh, the weather has turned quite bad recently so I'm afraid I won't really be able to give some right impressions uh, in the next couple of weeks Although what I can tell you straight up is this thing is going to be massively loud because well it's just it's hollow so all the sound resonates in there no foam core to soak that up so 
it's going to be fun for sure and I haven't had a disc wheel or ridden a disc wheel for months now so basically since the end of June so really looking forward to it and if you want to know more about how I further develop my bike setup or perhaps my bike setups for other disciplines then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe it's off today thanks for watching and see you next time